my Verizon hotspot is dead, so the question is what to do now. Welcome, my friend. Seven Gray here. Thank you for joining me today for this episode. I want to talk today about hotspots and internet access while you're boondocking and while you're stealth camping and while you're living in an RV, a van, or a step van, or a box truck, whatever your vehicle is. And so I want to talk about internet access, internet options, and uh, hot spots and uh, my particular setup and what I think is the ideal setup. First let's start with uh, one of the components which is called a booster. So there's two different styles of boosters. One has a directional antenna. So think about this, you're going to be putting a telescoping pole somewhere outside of your rig, uh, running that up and at the top of that there's a little thing that looks like a a flat uh, triangular kind of thing and you point it at the cell phone tower to get access to your data. So that works great if you're camped in a spot for enough time and you don't mind putting a pole up and directing that towards a tower. But it's not ideal, let's say, if you're driving or if you're moving multiple times a day, going from parking lot to parking lot, uh, something like that. For that you want to go with the second style which is a short stubby antenna that you put on top of the roof uh, of your vehicle and it uses the roof itself like a dish on a satellite dish kind of thing. So that's part of the antenna and then the little stubby part is the actual place that receives the signals. So you want to have a certain area and the uh, different boosters list how much area it is. I think it's roughly about two feet of area that it needs to have around this. So you don't want it to be on the edge or off to the side or setting this thing on your dashboard because it's going to be ineffective. And with that kind of booster you can get a boost up to maybe 32 times the normal signal. Now these are important particularly if you're inside of a vehicle and you're trying to get the signal inside. Think about a uh, like a shielded box, you know, how you walk in a basement you lose your signal or you walk deep inside of a shopping mall you may lose your signal. The same thing happens to some degree when you walk inside of your RV or you climb inside of your van. Um, you're going to be losing signal because you're surrounded by this metal shell. So the great thing about a booster is you put the cradle inside of your vehicle and then the wire goes out to the antenna which is on the exterior of your vehicle. So cell phone boosters are great for normal phones and for internet data hotspots. Let me show you mine. This is a booster from a company called WeBoost. It's up here and basically it's like a cradle. You're supposed to set your phone in it, your hotspot in it, whatever. Uh, it has power here and then an antenna that goes up onto the roof. I have the short stubby antenna that's uh, probably only a couple inches tall. I have my WeBoost just mounted here above one of my kitchen countertops and normally um, one of my hotspots sits inside of that cradle. I have it strapped in with rubber bands so that I can drive around. I can actually upload as I'm going down the interstate for a YouTube video that might take a while to upload and I'm able to move from parking lot to parking lot and not have to worry about having a pull. Um, I also have a unique setup which I'm going to explain in a minute where I'm using Google Maps and it's pulling off of the hotspot here as I'm driving so that I'm not using data on my phone. Let me explain about my phone next. I did a video a while back about my phone. I think this phone is probably the single best mobile phone you can have if you love international travel. This is absolutely fantastic. It's not necessarily the greatest phone in the United States, but there are a couple of unique advantages. This phone here is from Google, and it's called the Google Fi Project. That's F-I, like um, Wi-Fi. It is a beta testing kind of uh, project from Google. They do all sorts of things like this. And this particular Google project is to experiment with um, using a phone that works primarily off of Wi-Fi and internet access. So it's voice over IP. In other words, it's avoiding the cell phone towers whenever possible and using Wi-Fi. This is a perfect phone if you're going from your office to your home, where you've got Wi-Fi at home, you've got Wi-Fi at your office. 
and then it's always using that network so you can go deep into say um, a large building or if you work in a basement um, you'll still be able to receive all of your calls and do all of your texting because it's going to be using the Wi-Fi network and not using cell phone towers. And this is also great if you're going to say a resort on the top of a mountaintop where there is no cell phone uh, signals, there's no cell towers, but the resort or the hotel that you're at on the top of that mountain has Wi-Fi or say a national park. I went up to Teton National Park, for example, and there's no cell phone reception at all in the park. And in the visitor center, they had Wi-Fi for free. So I was able to walk in, and I could make telephone calls, I could send texts, I had full internet access with Wi-Fi, my phone could ring, I could dial anything. The reason this is really great also for me, international travel, is it works in 135 countries without switching any chips. So the way I use this as a boondocker or stealth camping or anything like that is that when there's no T-Mobile service, which is the primary carrier that Google uses, uh, when the T-Mobile drops out, whatever my hotspot is, uh, Verizon, uh, Sprint, whatever that is, it can dial, receive phone calls, uh, make phone calls, send text messages, as well as have internet and Google Maps on my phone. So there's a number of times that I'm driving down the road and my hotspot will have internet access and be feeding map data and things like that to my phone, even though I don't have the T-Mobile network. And then, of course, I have T-Mobile when I need it, and it can also act as a hotspot. So this is one option. I try not to use it for data because Google Fi, you pay a flat fee for your text and your voice, but you have to pay per gigabyte for data, about 10 bucks, which is average. That's similar to what Verizon charges for their data. Um, anyway, so I try not to use data on this. This is the Google Fi phone. I'll put a link down below to all of these products I'm talking about today, the Weeboost, the telephone I have, and the hotspots. In January of 2018, I purchased this little guy here. This is from a company called PCs for People, which specializes in uh, less expensive technology products for people with extremely low income. I think you have to earn less than $20,000 a month to qualify to get uh, products from PCs for People. They have uh, several offices, uh, actual walk-in stores. One is in Denver, Colorado. You can also order online. They'll require you to send in your tax return to qualify to buy these products. So this is a product from ZTE and it is a Sprint um, mobile hotspot. So the great thing about this is it is very, very fast. Um, the other day I was at a rest stop on the interstate and I was getting 50 megabits coming down and about 8 or 9 megabits going up very, very fast. Um, it is unlimited data and it uh, is throttles based on use in your area. So, for instance, right now, I'm parked in a Walmart parking lot, and I'm getting about 7 or 8 megabits coming down and about 1 or 2 going up. That's not terribly bad for a hotspot, but if I were in another location um, where there's not a lot of other people around, like a rest stop, as I mentioned, then this would be running flat out at top speed. You can get 60 megabits, something like that, way, way faster. So this is extremely fast. Um, I paid $100 for this and $10 a month, uh, which is a pretty fabulous deal. The one downside to this is it is the Sprint network, which is great in cities, but not so great in national forest or BLM lands, which is the primary area that boondockers will be traveling to. Boondockers, by the way, just a quick definition, is living off the grid, so to speak. You're uh, supplying your own power, your own water, and your own uh, internet uh, from your vehicle, uh, usually solar power with um, water storage and your own toilet. That's uh, boondocking. So anyway, this is, uh, I'll put a link to the PCs for people. This particular one, the ZTE, has been discontinued and have been replaced by other models, similar offerings from PCs for people and similar prices. So anyway, you can look on their site if that uh, interests you and if you qualify for the low income.
The last item that I have here is a Verizon Jetpack. This is the 6620L. I purchased it just last month. Um, and on July 4th, I activated this. Um, I went with some recommendations of some other YouTubers and online sources. I'm not blaming them. Um, I'm not uh, pointing fingers. I'm just saying this is uh, where I came from. Uh, there's a little bit of drama right now going around the 6620 Jetpack. And that is that um, I bought this off of eBay used and then I paid for a remote uh, service to do what's called a remote flash on this. I didn't know all of the details. I still don't know all the details about what the flash does. I do know that it rewrites some of the software in here so that you're able to access a refill uh, program from Verizon, which is $5 a month. That's pretty spectacular, pretty cool. I uh, activated this on July 4th and it worked through the end of July and August 1st on the refill. It was dead and it quit working. So I have about $200 into this and now I have a dead product. Um, it doesn't look like at this point there's going to be a way to fix this to get it working again that I know of. Uh, I have no idea in the future if I'll get this activated again. The top speed for this particular product was about 17 megabits uh, coming down and about 2, possibly 3 megabits going up. That was the maximum. I never got those kinds of speeds out of it. Uh, the top I got was maybe 9 or 10 megabits coming down. That's still reasonable and really great if you're out in BLM land or National Forest, but not the best stellar performance for a hotspot. Last, let me talk about what I would consider the perfect setup, um, which may or may not still be available. I would say a Verizon hotspot, which you would use when you needed it and had no other option. So that's what you're going to be using for boondocking out in BLM land, national forest, something like that, where you've got no other options. Um, I'm not sure which unit to go with or which plan to go with, but I do have friends that that's exactly what they do. Item number two, I would look at getting the AT&T Mobley device. It's a hotspot from AT&T. It's unlimited data, but it does throttle after 22 gigs of downloadable data. This is really a good unit because it's $20 a month, and AT&T has reasonably good service and coverage, just a little bit less than Verizon, at least in my experience going to BLM um, spots and National Forest spots. So I would go with those two plus some form of a booster, either an omnidirectional booster like I have from WeBoost or a directional unit that uh, you put up on a pole with the directional type thing. Uh, and then your cell phone, I would pick a mobile phone company that is not one of the other two just so that you have a third option to pull on when you can I myself like the uh, Google Fi with the T-Mobile because T-Mobile I think is the third best carrier for coverage. That way I can get um, three different carriers uh, that you're carrying around and you've got multiple options or maybe just your phone and one hotspot. I would probably pick uh, AT&T or Verizon. Um, I don't know what's happening with AT&T and the Mobley. From what I understand with the Mobley product has been discontinued by AT&T. But maybe with the next uh, CES, uh, Consumer Electronics Show down in Vegas, they will announce some new product that will come out to replace that uh, in the upcoming months because I think with um, the popularity of van life and RV and nomadic living, it just makes sense that somebody's going to come out with a $20 or less monthly product that gives you some sort of unlimited data and maybe throttles after a certain amount of time. It, to me, it just sort of makes sense that this is going to come on the market here sometime in the next year. So that's all I have for uh, sort of a tech uh, kind of a review thing, giving my rundown on what I use here. I really don't have the perfect solution right now. I'm uh, sort of crippled because my Verizon hotspot quit working and I'm relying primarily on the Sprint network which is great in cities as I mentioned not so good for boondocking or for being out in camping environments 
So hopefully I can figure out a solution in the f near future for some sort of a Verizon or a AT&T hotspot that I can get activated and running at a reasonable cost. Uh, welcome your comments, uh, input, and advice. Um, thank you for watching. Savor the moment. See you next episode.